Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 32. This training tutorial, we're going to focus on setting up a target air fuel table, understanding the influence it has on our fueling calculations, and then programming it based on different applications. So whether you're going to be naturally aspirated or force induction, a lot of details to cover here for a solid target air fuel to work off of in your airflow and fuel strategy. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our target air fuel or target lambda table, depending on unit scale you're referencing, within our NSP software for use with our Haltech Elite systems. This is gonna be a very basic but very powerful topic. We need to know what values to place into our target air fuel or target lambda table so that when we're doing our tuning, we have a proper point of reference that we're trying to calibrate against. Now the closed loop correction is gonna reference the target air fuel or target lambda tables. We'll talk about closed loop correction in the next tutorial. And then we're also going to find the target air fuel or target lambda tables are referenced in our air and fuel modeling equation for both mass airflow and speed density volumetric efficiency based strategies. So we have our underlying equation, fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. That's gonna be coming from our target lambda or target air fuel table here. We need to make sure those values are accurate because they are part of our fueling calculation. Now the beauty of dialing in things in a mass airflow or VE based airflow model, we'll find that if we wanna change our target air fuel or target lambda, let's say we've calibrated everything to a relatively rich mixture, something like 75, 76 lambda or 11 to one air fuel on the petrol air fuel scale, we had that as our target. If we've dialed everything in within our airflow model, whether it's mass airflow or this VE speed density model, if we wanna change that target air fuel, we can simply jump into our table here and just change it here and automatically we'll scale out the injector pulse width so we hit that proper target air fuel that we're going after. But that's only if we validated our airflow and fuel modeling so we have everything squared away there, if it's all good, we can simply just change the value in our table. But we need to make sure the values in the table here are good starting points and that's something we wanna actually calibrate against. So let's jump in here and let's talk about this. Let's break this down. We're gonna keep this, this specific tutorial very really focused on setting this up based on the application we're dealing with. So whether we're naturally aspirated or force induction, and then also the conditions we're operating our engine in, whether we're gonna be in vacuum, we're gonna be at full throttle, um, whether it's naturally aspirated or full throttle force induction, we're getting into boost. We need to make sure that we have values that are appropriate, that are safe, that'll do exactly what we want when we're calibrating. So we can see here within our fuel tuning window, I have a value here in our uh, channel, it's called target lambda, and then we have our O2 lambda reading, that's from the wideband. We're gonna find that essentially when we're calibrating, we're always comparing these two, and we wanna make sure that the actual lambda is reaching the target, but we wanna make sure that that target value is accurate to calibrate against. So let's jump in here and take a look at this. So we're gonna move from our fuel tuning window over here to our lambda tuning window. In here, we find that we have our target lambda or target air fuel table, depending on what type of units you're referencing here. Under preferences, we can go up to unit options, and then we'll find here under air fuel, I have it set right now to lambda, although I can switch it over here to the air fuel gasoline petrol scale. We're gonna be working between these two here in this tutorial as we're going and referencing some things. Let me actually switch it over to air fuel gasoline petrol because most people are comfortable looking at a wideband gauge reading. A wideband gauge reading is gonna be on the petrol gasoline air fuel scale, where 14.7 is equal to stoichiometric, or the ideal burn ratio between, as we're burning the fuel in the combustion chamber, giving us the best emissions output, the best fuel economy, and the best out power output from our engines. Combination of all of those. It's giving us the happy medium between everything relative to the petrol scale. So this is what we're gonna be just talking about right now, but we can simply switch over to Lambda if we want to, at any given time, it'll just convert all of these units. It's the difference between working in Celsius or Fahrenheit, just kind of looking at temperature, so you understand the difference. Same temperature reading, but it's just gonna be in a different unit scale. Same idea here. So let's go and click OK so we can just convert this over and we can just talk about this a little bit easier, and then we can convert it back to Lambda um, at any point in time. So looking here, we have three tables we're gonna be focusing on for this tutorial. That's gonna be our target Lambda table, and then we have our target lambda coolant correction, target lambda air temp correction tables. These tables will combine together, they'll be cumulative, to give us a actual target air fuel or target lambda that we're gonna be referencing and shooting for when the engine is running. So looking at this, we can see here that if we take a look at our axes, this is going here, engine RPM on the side, 
manifold pressure here at the top. We have to factor in what application we're dealing with here when we're working within our target air fuel table. So this meaning, are we now? Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.